screams here from the experts. Mikey T, give me a team that missed the playoffs last season that you see playing in January. Hannah, this one's easy. It's the LA Chargers. It's all because of the H's. It's coach Jim Harbaugh making Justin Herbert healthy. In the history of our sport, Jim Harbaugh has the fourth highest winning percentage. I think what they're going to be able to do is run the ball with Greg Roman as their offensive coordinator and then set up deep play action shots that really plays to Justin's strength. And I think he'll take a lot less hits during the season. And I think they're going to be a massively improved team. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about this because it's so interesting to me that the Chargers get such little uh, media attention considering where they are. They're in Southern California. They got Harbaugh, who is box office, Herbert, who I think is an elite quarterback, but it's fallen out of favor to like Herbert. People think that he's not that good and he hasn't won and this or that. And what I'm really excited to do now is we're going to have a perfect example now because I've, I've used so many different examples with various OCs and quarterbacks um, as to why it matters so much. And we are going to see just arguably the best example of a great quarterback like Herbert having some success, unable to really, where a lot of people, a lot of people who know ball think that he is elite, but some of the other casual fans, and I don't say that negatively, I understand casual fans can only watch so much football. And especially if it's not your team, you, you, you can only, you know, form such, such opinions, but they're just like, see, he's not that good. And it's like, no, this is why he's not that good. This is why he's struggling because of coaching personnel, etc. And then people come back and say, well, that's not good enough. That's not good enough excuse. And we're going to see just a perfect example that I'm going to be able to reference for years to come. And I'm going to be able to be like, well, some random quarterback who we don't even know the name of is now John Worthington. John Worthington is actually a good quarterback, but the coach is just not good. We need to get him a better OC. And, and I could be like, like they did with Justin Herbert and Harbaugh, you know, at a few years ago. Like, I'm excited for that other example that I can now add into the chamber because Herbert really is just an unbelievable talent. And just like how teams are all in on trying to find a quarterback and keep trying to find that next quarterback. Who's the next quarterback? Who's the next Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud. And it's like, do we play this game where we like linger with a Baker Mayfield, a Dak Prescott, like quarterbacks we know can win games, but like, can they get us over the hump? Like there's still that kind of like, ah, Kirk Cousins, like what do we do here? And I think we're going to have a similar thing with coaches where it's like, people will be no longer willing to give head coaches as long of a runway. It's already getting shorter and shorter and shorter because the owners are getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier that they can sign a, a coach to a $100 million contract, have him, play, have him coach for a few years, have it not work out and say, whatever, you're fired. Like once upon a time, the owners would not do that. And now it's like, they don't care because these guys are so mega wealthy that a $100 million contract is nothing. It's better for them just to pay the guys to do nothing and bring in some new blood. So I just think that Harbaugh, you'll, you'll see immediately the Chargers being instantly better. Now, how much success will they have? Um, I don't know. I've always put them on like a more two-year window because the Chargers were a mess. and They did need to be rebuilt. Um, but I, I think Herbert will be fine, but I just think that team as a whole needs to be rebuilt. But the one thing that Harbaugh also really understands is offensive line. And I think what JCT Slice talked about before, where he was saying in the comments where he was saying, talking about, um, how important an O-line is to winning, right? Like we, it's so important that that's like such a common denominator in a lot of these teams that, um, ultimately win it all. And that is something that I trust that Harbaugh, because he even had to defend himself for some for for what he was doing. And he's like, you know, the O line is is like or is a weapon. And he he seems to be one of the few people that actually like understands that and vocally, um, you know, relays that message. And so I think that does help out everything. And of course, it's going to help out Herbert and the offense as a whole. Um, but it's just also going to be it's going to help establish. You're going to be we're going to be able to see like the identity of what the Chargers offense should look like with Justin Herbert because we've never really seen it. Once upon a time with their head coach, who was a defensive head coach, he created this identity of like, we're the aggressive team. We're going to, we're willing to go for it, you know, fourth down, fourth and three on our own 30. Like that's our identity. And it's like, that's not an identity 
that's kind of just stupidity. That's like trying to be the smartest man in the room and it didn't work out for you. It's not to say that you can't ever go in those circumstances, but it's like, that's, that's not your identity. That's just a thing you do. That could be a tool in your toolbox that can make teams kind of be like, well, hey, you never know. Like you felt that with the Detroit Lions where they were like, you don't know what Dan Campbell is going to do. And the fact that he did some trick plays did keep the defense on his toes. That was more of an identity it, to the to a degree. But the, the Chargers were never able to build an offensive identity. And that's one of the drawbacks that you have when you have a revolving door of offensive coordinators and you have a defensive head coach and when you have such a great quarterback defensive coaches often just rely on that quarterback to be great they're just like he's gonna be great no matter who we got it's the defense that we need to focus on and it's like well you didn't do a good job at that either so i think harbaugh will bring a more complete vision to the chargers and i think that's kind of already um what they're already doing with some of the decisions that they've made and so um, I think it's a fair chance that they do make the playoffs. And I, I just think that if you are, I don't think any team will want to face the Chargers when you have a hardball and you have a Herbert. Having a deadly quarterback and a deadly head coach who's not going to be intimidated by the moment, that's always dangerous. Even if your team's not that great, even if you just kind of limped into the playoffs, it's a deadly combination. It just is because at that point, they can make magic. They can get on a run. They'll be a tough out because the moment's not going to be too big for them. And we see consistently in the NFL, especially in the playoffs, a lot of times with these quarterbacks and coaches, the moment is too big for them. They either out coach themselves, the quarterbacks get scared, like it, the things like just, just crumble. We've seen that a lot, even with great coaches. Even Sean McVay admitted, you know, that essentially he outcoached himself, right? Like that he he overthought certain things earlier in his coaching career. So even it happens to great coaches. But Harbaugh, the great thing about Harbaugh is that he's already had success in the NFL. Like he's already had legitimate bona fide success in the NFL and almost won a Super Bowl. Um, was pretty much a blackout away from winning the Super Bowl. Um, and was probably pretty much misaligned and, and firing him was... Most likely not a good move, although they were fortunate enough to get Shanahan. But regardless, I do see that the Chargers will have success um, to the point where how fast will that success come from? I don't know because they were a messy organization. He did really have to go in there and just rip the roots out and rip everything out and kind of start from new. And so to me, I, I put this on a one to two year timeline, but I also would not be shocked if they start making noise very quickly because i think when you get the coach right and you get the quarterback right that that honestly these days feels like that's 75 percent of it right there that they'll be able to make moves and i and i really think that they they'll do that but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about the chargers and harbaugh and apparently they're reported to be uh the chances are that there will be eighth in the afc so a 45 percent chance to make the playoffs do you think that's fair? Do you think that the Chargers will actually be able to make some noise this season? Or do you think, no, Harbaugh's not that good. Justin Herbert's not elite. Keep dreaming. Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.